All right, thanks for watching. And today, let me show you a really cool polar coordinates trick to evaluate a limit in multivariable calculus. If you remember from multivariable calculus, it's usually very hard to evaluate a limit. You would have to do an epsilon delta argument because you would really have to show that no matter how you approach zero, zero in this case, you always get the same value. It turns out, exactly in this example, it's actually easier to use polar coordinates. So let's transform this into polar coordinates. So r is cosine of theta, oh, sorry, x is co r cosine of theta, and y is r cosine of theta. So this becomes limit of something, and I'll elaborate on this in a second. So x to the fourth is r to the fourth cosine to the fourth theta plus three r to the fourth sine to the fourth theta over x squared plus y squared. If you plug that in, you get r squared. Now the question is, what goes to zero? And you might be very tempted to say, hey, r and theta go to zero. But that's not quite true. Because you have zero, zero, this is r theta. What could happen possibly is that you just spiral into this limit. And while it is true that r goes to zero, it is not necessarily true that theta goes to zero. Because you see here, theta just goes between 0 and 2 pi infinitely many times. So, turns out though, theta doesn't really matter. All that matters is that r goes, r goes to 0. r go, okay? And then it turns out we can simplify this limit a little bit. That's limit r goes to 0 of r squared cosine to the fourth theta plus 3 r squared sine to the fourth theta. And here's the nice thing. This thing, right, it wiggles between plus and minus 1. In fact, it wiggles between 0 and 1, even better. And this goes to 0. And same thing here. This goes to 0, and this wiggles between 0 and 1. So it turns out the whole thing then just goes to 0. But let me just be a little bit more precise. So as I mentioned, cosine to the fourth theta is between 0 and 1. And then multiply this by the positive quantity r squared. So r squared cosine to the fourth theta is between r squared and minus r squared. This goes to 0 as r goes to 0. This goes to zero as r goes to zero. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, this goes to zero. So by squeeze. So rigorously, this term goes to zero. And using a similar argument, that term goes to zero. So the whole limit equals to zero. And I want to tell you, this is actually very rigorous. Because, remember, what makes limits in two dimensions so hard is that you have to show that no matter how you approach the point zero, zero, you get the same limit, right, something like that. You know, you could also spiral in like that or just do some monster thingy here, right. No matter which path you choose, you should get the same limit, zero, and notice here, we made no assumptions whatsoever on our path. You know, at no point did we say we take the horizontal path or the vertical path. So this is still rigorous and pretty general. And there is no need here to use an epsilon delta argument. How cool is that? All right, if you like this neat little trick and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.